it's in the game. It's the 49ers and the G-Men, and it comes your way next. We're across the Hudson from Midtown Manhattan at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the San Francisco 49ers and the New York Giants. Set to go now on a beautiful, sunny afternoon. And we are underway from MetLife Stadium. And that decision to bring it out ends up not being a good one. Cost him about five yards as he's tackled at the 20. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. And out will come the leader of this offense. And that, of course, is their signal caller. And I liked what his head coach told us about him this week, that no matter what happens, he, whether he throws seven interceptions or seven touchdown passes, he's the same assertive leader in the huddle on each and every play. He can throw the seven interceptions, just blame the football, blame anything else, and still carry himself like he is the man. It's like you, assertive in our production meetings. Well, especially when we're talking, talking about ordering dinner. Ordering I was snacks. just going to say. That's, that's where I go. Give him three there on the first play of the game, and it's second down. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Now second and seven from the 23. Going to give this time to the tailback. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. All day, baby, all day. That old line will take the back over there on that run. The athleticism of offensive lines continues to evolve, and we're seeing it here. Not only are they controlling things right at the line of scrimmage, but they're able to get upfield to get to what we call the second and the third levels. You know, get to the linebacker spot, the secondary spot, getting all the way downfield with their blocking, which helps keep the running back clean. They'll try to continue that trend here this afternoon. On first down, Craig, and hit behind the line. He lost the football. It's loose, and the Giants have it. It's picked up, and they take possession of the football and have it at the 36-yard line. So here are the Giants now in great field position to start their initial drive. And a glance here at their quarterback standing six foot three. And what's a quarterback's best friend? Balance? I think you're right. <laughs> I agree with you. You know, a lot of guys would say great receiver, right? A terrific offensive line. But I agree with you, balance, because if you can run the ball effectively, that just opens things up for guys who want to throw it and gives you easier passing lanes and easy. And now, as with every potential turnover, they're going to take a second look at this just to make sure. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. The fumble on first down now. Here's second down. Here's Montana to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball. But surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. An incomplete pass on that last play. And that means he'll need to come up with something here on third down. Now Montana. He finds his man complete. It's Craig. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. Three yards all they could muster there, and it'll bring up fourth down. Here's Mitch Wisnowski now on to punt. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. That punt was near perfection as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that, yeah, right? Yeah, he said the football is roughly a prolate spheroid, which means it's going to bounce funny, and you never know where it's going to end up. First 
first and ten, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. And he'll maneuver his way forward for about four. Second and six. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got him pinned down deep. And on the first play, they give up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down. That's what they talk about us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target, ahead of schedule. They were after that run. Now Sims. And he's got Shockey. And he's going to get this from the 6 out to the 12. A pickup of 6 as they double their workspace. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. On third down. It's Morris, and he's going to have the first down as he's marked down just shy of the 20. Big conversion. They were backed up deep to start the drive, able to pick up the first. So the goal is at least a first down here, right? Pick up a first down, give yourself some breathing room, and if you have to punt after that, maybe you've helped with field position and you've helped out your defense. And avoided a three and out on their opening drive. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Here's Sims. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Back to throw. Sims. Looking left side and he's got a man. That's Ingram. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. Well, I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere. And they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know, they want to get this man involved as well. And that's what they just did on that play. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Looking to throw. Sims. Quick hitter here is complete. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. It's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. They go play action here on first down. This one complete to Ingram. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 34. Off play action, Sims, he lets this one fly toward the back of the end zone, and he's got it, touchdown, Giants, a great play there, 34 yards, and the Giants are going to take a first quarter lead. Personally for him, a great opening drive, he had three catches, including the touchdown. That felt like tremendous scouting, great film watching, and creating a game plan to start this off, not only to get him involved. And now, of course, all scoring plays are reviewed, and I think they're going to take an extra long look at this one. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they call the 
a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review, so they had it right. Now the try here for the extra point. It's up, it's good, and the Giants have a 7-0 lead. So that drive goes eight plays, and it was finished up by a touchdown by the New York Giants. to bring this one out. Ready to get this next drive started. The New York offense at the line. And it's been a rocky start for them thus far. They had the turnover and then the punt on those first two drives. So there is optimism because they've improved, right? The turnover, you just noted it. Punt's the better. Drive. Punt's better than the turnover. The punt is better on the second one. Now they're hoping to turn into first downs and hopefully points. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. The 49ers with the football here to begin the second quarter as they are looking at a second and five situation. They will look to throw Montana. That's complete to his running back Taylor. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. They'll run on first down. It's Craig. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. Play action. It's Montana. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off at the 46, and the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. That throw, Charles, over the middle of the field, and a few too many bodies in there got picked. That's a normal situation, too, isn't it? No matter how hard you try and spread the field sometimes, there's always going to be a traffic jam, it feels like, towards the middle. And if there's any type of a missed throw, or maybe the ball's tipped, or just too many bodies in the area, an interception can result. down. It's Morris. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. The last run got six, now second and four. Back to throw. Sims. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. 
And that was a round run, not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and put the down marker back to one. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll try the left side. Morris, and only able to get two here, stopped at the 30. Oh, yeah. oh, that's a real nice job there by the defensive front. They just engaged and held their ground. But how about the guy who made the play? We often talk about whether they take a good first step or not. Many times, you just don't take any step. Just get your feet moving, get your body going. And then once he made the read, he was able to make the play. Off the play fake, Sims. Wide open receiver complete. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. He can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go through a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. I don't know about you, Brandon, but I often think to myself, in these situations, I want a back who can create his own space, who can break tackles, and in a sense, become his own blocker. We don't have that guy in the game right now. He'll try again. And he is in. Touchdown, New York. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Giants are able to grow their lead. No success on first down. He couldn't get any yardage. They give it to him again, and he finds the end zone. Sometimes it just has to be persistence, doesn't it? And you know who else helps with that? Offensive line. After a team's been stuffed, the last thing they want to do is go to a different play call. They want to come back and do it again and show that they can dominate the line of scrimmage. Now the extra point try forthcoming. And it's good to make it 14 nothing. So the drive there took six plays. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. Turn. And he returns this to the 22. Come on, baby. Let's go. Now we get a peek at the captain of this offense heading back out there. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Second quarter action with 1.59 remaining. Coming up at halftime in a little less than two minutes, we'll send you to Orlando where Jonathan Coachman is standing by. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half. He finds his man complete. It's Craig. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Three yards the gain there, second down. Second 
To throw is Montana. And a quick throw here. That's complete. First down now, but that clock rolling. Montana. And the giant rush gets home as down he goes. They'll wind up losing eight on the sack there, and it's second down. Well, when you're down a couple of scores like this, CD, you can't afford too many plays that go in the wrong direction like that one. Yeah, when you take a good look at it broadly, sacks are better than giving up an interception. But where they are on the scoreboard, they've got to get rid of all of that and just create positive plays for themselves in order to have a chance. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Operating out of the gun, here's Montana. He finds his man, complete. That's Craig. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And five in the secondary now for the Giants on third down. He'll look to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. So a couple of first downs on this drive, but it's looking like another empty possession. But those empty possessions are certainly starting to pile up. So the adjustments that teams talk about all the time have to be taking place. They've got to analyze what's breaking down and figure a way to fix it. Here comes the 49ers punter now as he'll come on to kick this one away. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. as it checked up inside the five-yard line. You never know where these things are going to go, do you? No. What was it? You got a John Heisman quote about that, yeah, right? Yeah, he said the football is roughly a prolate spheroid, which means it's going to bounce funny, and you never know where it's going to end up. The Giants offense at the line, ready to begin their next drive. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the lock. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked off at the 12, and he'll be marked down at the two-yard line. Come on, guys. We got this. So the first thing that crossed my mind is why didn't they just sit on the lead and take it to the locker room? They're in good shape. Absolutely. And from this spot on the field, now you've given the other side a chance for points here going into intermission. Yeah, you changed the momentum of the game, and it's something you did not need to do. Well, the Niners going back on offense now late in this first half. And they begin in a glorious spot, to say the least. First and goal at the two-yard line. This is first and goal, and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. They'll try to run this one in. And across the chalk, into the end zone. It's a 49er touchdown. Taking it in from two yards out. And the Niners are on the board here in the final minute of the first half. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yeah. of a half, headed into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take it to the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed. A lot of football, full half to be played. Gold with the extra point, and that'll cut the lead down to a touchdown. Come on. 
After the touchdown, it's Robbie Gold now to kick it away. And this will not be returned. It'll come out to the 25. Let's go. There he is, the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. He's got the lead here in the second quarter. He's thrown the touchdown, but also an interception. As a quarterback, does that interception, even though you're playing while your team's got the lead, does that always stick in the back of your mind a little bit? For the best ones, it just upsets them that they did that because they don't think there should be any blemishes on their record. They think that they're way better than that. So your confidence gets tested a little bit. Being able to go back out there, maybe throw another touchdown, that'll tamp that down in a big way. Yeah, I can see it. He's looked pretty good to this point. Yeah, he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. This time they'll just keep this on the ground. So we've reached halftime here at MetLife Stadium with the Giants out in front. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though. A look at the next-gen stats for the Niners in that first half. And they did not do much at all in terms of throwing the football in those first two quarters. That's going to need to improve if they want to erase this deficit. Meanwhile, for the Giants, we check out their numbers on the ground as they'll try to keep the momentum going into the second half. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. just outside the goal line. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. The Giants about set to go to begin this third quarter. And Charles, they've got the lead. Put your coaching hat on here now. What's the game plan for the second half? I think getting the running game going a little bit more because I thought in the first half, they didn't get it moving the way that they would like. They had success throwing it. But I think these first couple of drives, they'll want to get those running backs going and give them more opportunities. And I will guarantee you that those guys were lobbying for them in the locker room at halftime. On first down, Sims. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. Seven yards, the pick up there. Nice running throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second down and three. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Get ready, get ready, get ready. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football. In that situation, that's almost a tendency breaker. the 34 now here's first and 10. Off play action Sims and Sims lost it he lost the football. The 
talk a lot about setting the tone to start the game. Well, you want to start the tone right in the third quarter as well and nearly lost a football there in their first drive. And sometimes we overdo it when we talk about halftime adjustments and what teams are going to do. Most of the time, it's just a matter of executing the game plan you brought in. But I'll guarantee you, they didn't draw that play up on the whiteboard at halftime. They're fortunate to retain possession. So they keep the football, but now face second and long. Now it's Morris. And he'll go down right at the 30-yard line. On any running play this calm, they're always hoping that's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, and certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. And the Giants send out their punter now as he's on to kick it away. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Niners will go on offense first and ten. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. And their defense did its job by forcing the punt to start things out. And now, Charles, can the offense get in gear? I think, partner, you can sense them saying, OK, the first half was theirs, but now let's get the momentum back on our side. We forced a punt. Now let's go downfield and score. If we do that, we'll be set up well for this second half. First and 10 for Montana and company. The open man is Clark, complete. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. You know, despite the scoreline, I think they've got to like where they are here. They're on the road in just one big play away from getting right back in this game. I'm going to follow right along with you because the spot they're in now is a credit to their defense. They've kept that minute by making the plays that they've made, and that just means you're one big score away from being right back there. Now the question is, can this offense step up and make that play? Because that's been an issue for them in this game. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. And those two just haven't been in sync thus far. They've done a nice job against him, but still, with his talent, you would expect them to have more completions to him in this game. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. They'll look to throw again. He's got it complete to Clark. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. On third down. Craig, and he will have the first down as he's brought down up this. near midfield. They had yet to run the ball on this drive, but third and short, definitely was a great time to down one. First downs have them up near midfield now on first and ten. 
Shotgun. Here's Montana. He finds his man complete. That's Clark. And he's able to get this one down to the 40-yard line. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. Under a minute to go in this third quarter as they come up first and ten. From the gun, they'll try to run it. And he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now here at MetLife Stadium. It's 49er football, but some ground to cover. They find themselves behind as we hit the fourth and final quarter. From the 38, Montana. That'll be caught by Rice. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means they have to run extra plays, harder to move it. The Niners on third down, just one for three thus far. Here it's third and two. They'll set up a throw. He finds his man complete. That's Rice. And he's going to have a Niners first down. It's a gain of six for the time on third and two. It would be safe to say that as precise as Rice are supposed to be run in the NFL, Maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball. That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. And here's a handoff out of the gun. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back, those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully in this game. They get him to the ground right on the cusp of the red zone after a pickup of five or six. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. This offense has converted two third downs on this drive already. This is third and four. From the gun, he'll hand this off. And they'll get him down about three yards short of the first. Just a yard on the run there, and that's going to bring us to a third down. This was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stopped them for almost no game. One score down, here we go. They're gonna go for it here on fourth down. Going to try to throw for it with Montana. To the right side, complete to Taylor. And unable to break away. They stop him a few yards shy. The Niners go for it, but it doesn't work out. And the Giants are going to get the football back. 
So they'll trudge off the field with a bitter taste in their mouths after that failed fourth down conversion. Yeah, there'll be a lot of analysis there on the sidelines. Was it the right call? Was it, the, was it against the right defense? Should they have even gone for it at all? Will that change what they do going forward in this game? A lot of questions to be answered by them. The defense doesn't really care. They're like, bring it on again. We'll stop you the next time, too. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. They begin the drive with Morris. And he sneaks his way forward only for a couple here, second down. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring it up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. On third down, Sims. Throwing for his running back, and he's got him complete. Yeah, this defense rallies, and they stop him short of the first down right near the 24. They do get seven out of that, but not enough to prevent a fourth down. Come on, now. So it's Giants football here as we welcome you back. They're looking at a fourth down now as they try to hold on to this lead for dear life. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And possession will switch hands first and ten. So now the Niners down on the scoreboard. A minute 53 remaining. They need a touchdown to the PAT to tie it as they come up first and ten. takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there and for the offense. They're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. He'll look to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Clark. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. A gain of six there on first. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere. In the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills. You want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Second and four. Back to throw. Over the middle, that's caught by Rice. Now you're right on the edge of field goal range. You've still got time, but get up to the line of scrimmage and get set. First down now, but the clock continues to move. He's back to throw. He finds Taylor, complete. 
And he's got this down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. They'll look to throw. He finds his man complete. That's Rice. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Giants' 30. Pardon, you got to like what they're doing right there. Little by little, they're getting closer. Another good pickup. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now Montana. Over the middle complete. It's Rice. And he's stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. And remember, field goal does him no good in this situation. You got to think they should be taking some shots for the end zone soon. The 49ers now going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop him with a little over 30 ticks to go in the football game. Second down, Montana got his man complete over the middle. It's Craig. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they'll stop it with 25 ticks remaining on the clock. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. And he's got his man in stride. Complete. And now the Niners going to signal for their third and final timeout as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. And just a yard to go here on second down. Here's Montana to throw. Over the middle complete. It's Craig. And he'll take this into the end zone. Now, hold on here. We do have a flag down. So let's see what this is about. Late game. That hurts. Take the touchdown off the board. No doubt about it. And this is where you make a great movie scene, right? Go in, rally the team. Okay, we lost points there. Let's get it back and go out and score again. Can he get it done? They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Back to throw again. No to turn this time, and he goes down. Sack back of the 29. They'll wind up losing 10 on the sack. And it'll lead to a third and long. Well, Charles, exciting to the very end. That's what we just saw in this game. Final play there, had it in the 